Right, good afternoon. Um, I'd like to thank the um, organisers for inviting me to give this um, talk this afternoon. Um, I'm going to talk about using nanoparticles to deliver miRNA to treat um, COPD. Um, the aim of this research is it's, um, quite fundamental research at this stage where we're developing polymeric nanoparticles um, for the pulmonary delivery of miRNA. And um, Sonia's talk, it's quite lucky that she talked before me because it'll actually save me um, going over some of the descriptions of long delivery. And um, the technology platform that we are using is actually very similar to what Sonia described, where from the nanoparticles, we incorporate them into what we call nanocomposite microparticles, um, where the nanoparticles are a microcarrier to allow the aerosolization for dry powder inhalation. And I'll talk a little bit about just the technology platform that we have um, and then the application of it towards miRNA delivery. So COPD is a heterogeneous inflammatory disease and it's the fourth leading um, cause of death worldwide. And although there are several um, current treatments for the disease, they really treat the, the symptoms of the disease and they don't alter the progression of the disease. So ultimately the disease stays with you and it will eventually lead to um, death. So what we're now looking for is um, treatments to treat the progression. And because this is a lung disease, then one of the best ways to treat the lung disease is to deliver the drug locally to the lung via the pulmonary route. Um, microRNA expression and function is, is becoming um, a strategy for therapeutic um, intervention. And if we can modulate the miRNA expression within a disease, then um, we can therapeutically control that disease. And this um, cartoon that I have here just shows you that we have the uh, microRNA within the cell. It will very specifically bind to the targeted messenger RNA, and it will block the translation of that mRNA, so we will get no protein formed. In um, fibroblasts associated with COPD, there's um, a cytokine-dependent induction of MIR146A, um, and what happens is if there's not enough MIR146A, then it, the messenger RNA um, translation is not controlled. We generate too much protein, and that um, is, leads to increased inflammation. If we can then supply extra MIR146A to the cell, then we can block the protein production and um, halt the inflammation with that. One of the problems of delivering miRNA is that we can't deliver naked mRNA to, the, um, to these cells because it won't cross the ionic cell membrane. So what this project is looking at is how we can formulate the miRNA to get it into the cell so that it can be effective. Now, most of my research, including this project, we look at we use nanoparticles, polymeric nanoparticles, to formulate biomarker molecules such as miRNA into the nanoparticles. And in this case, we're going to treat the COPD by compensating for the impaired levels of this biomolecule. Um, we, we have lots of different applications of this, and in some cases we encapsulate either um, RNA, DNA, proteins, drugs, peptides within the polymeric um, matrix. Um, another option is that we preform the particles and then we can absorb the molecules onto the outside. Depending on the application and the molecule that we're looking at, sometimes one over the other is preferable. Um, for proteins and RNA, um, absorption is the preferable, op preferable option. The conditions used for particle preparation tend to lead to a, a loss in, in function of biomolecules. Um, as Sonia said, if we have, um, for pulmonary delivery, we can't deliver nanoparticles. Um, inhalation just results in exhalation of these molecules. So we can put them into an aerosolizable microcarrier, which um, of the correct geometry um, of one to five micrometers, um, which will allow us to aerosolize these and they will be deposited in the correct region of the lung. Um, we spray dry the nanoparticles, um, in this case with leucine, but we've got some research ongoing looking at different sugars, different amino acids, and, and combination of those to form nanocomposite microparticles. A lot of my research is looking at these applications for pulmonary delivery, either for local to, to treat lung disease or systemically um, for vaccine deliver, delivery and also um, for um, cancer therapy, looking at small molecule delivery. So the delivery system is essentially we have, in this case we have an RNA absorbed nanoparticle, 
We then encapsulate that within a nanocomposite microparticle. It's inhaled as a dry powder, it's deposited in the lungs, and then it's uptaken into the cells. Um, so the research plan for this, we actually um, we work right from the beginning where we make the polymers and we design polymers for different purposes, right through to particle preparation, making the, the carriers, and then um, in vitro assays of these um, systems. The polymers that I've been working with for several years now are an alternative to the commonly used polyesters for drug delivery. So you've got your polylactic glycolic acids. Several benefits that these um, polymers offer over that is, and the main one is that upon degradation, the um, degradation products are not so acidic. So particularly when you're delivering biomolecules, if you've got an acidic environment being instigated within your particle, then that can um, cause denaturation of the, the biomolecules. So the degradation products are not as acidic. Um, and we also have um, a backbone hydroxyl group here that we can use to attach drugs or different moieties to. So there's more option for functionalizing and altering the chemistry of these polymers. Um, just now we're actually also working a lot on um, using functionalized monomers based on these, which gives us a mo lot more opportunity to do click chemistry and, and add um, different linkages on there. We synthesize these enzymatically, and this allows us to retain that activity of the um, secondary hydroxyl group. So it's a linear polymer we're synthesizing. It's, it's not a network. Typically, molecular weights are about um, 16 kilodalton, which is, is really as much as we, we get with this system using enzymatic catalysis. So preparing nanoparticles, we're preparing blank nanoparticles. So we can just use a, a simple sing single um, emulsion solvent evaporation. Obviously, if we're going to encapsulate hydrophilic molecules, we have to go down the route of um, double emulsion solvent evaporation. Within the system, we are using um, DOTAP um, to produce cationic nanoparticles so that we can absorb the negatively charged RNA um, better, stronger onto these. Um, it's just a, just a simple um, probe sonication of our um, polymer in DCM with um, PVA, and then we add that to um, a less concentrated solution of PVA and allow the DCM to evaporate off. And we characterize these in term, with a uh, malvern zetasizer in terms of nanoparticle size and charge. The first part of this was to optimize the, the size and charge of the particles with the amount of dotap that we needed to use. And as you can see here, initially um, increasing the dotap concentration resulted in an increase in particle size. When we get to about 15% dotap, the, the nanoparticle size was comparable, around about 200 um, nanometers with the, black, with the, the ones without any um, dotap. And again, there's a change in charge from um, negative to positive as we increase the, the dotap concentration. Not least because dotaps are very expensive to work with, we want to use as little of it as, as possible. It's also got some toxicity issues, so we settled on the 15% dotap as being optimal. We then absorbed fluorescently labeled MIRNA, um, that MIR146A, onto the 15% dotap at room temperatures. And again, this was optimized in terms of the MIRA concentration, where the, the 40 micrograms per uh, milliliter was optimal. And there was no um, significant increase in time after two hours absorption. So those were the parameters that we used. Um, and we'd get roughly 3.6 micrograms per milligram of mRNA onto the nanoparticles. These were then spray dried from leucine. Um, well, actually, these weren't. We've yet to spray dry the um, MIR146A. This, this has been optimized using BSA as a model um, system, but we don't really expect there to be much difference when we substitute the mRNA, but we will, we'll see when we do that. But we spray dry these from our 1 to 1 1.5 um, polymer to, to leucine, and we get a 50% yield. And we can see here the SEMs, where we've got roughly spherical particles that are, have got very, very rough surface, and that also helps the aerosolization of these. Um, we do in vitro aerosolization studies using a next, gener next generation impactor, which effectively allows us to predict where in the lung these, these particles will land. Um, and we just use the, the British Pharmacopoeia standards for analysis um, of these. Again, this has been done using the BSA rather than the miRNA for the moment. Um, and we analyzed the BSA on different plates, there's different stages within the NGI, and we're really looking for deposition around about from stage three to six for where we want them to be in the inner lung. We can then, if I can just see, we can then calculate the mass medium air dynamic diameter, which as Sonia said, that's the important value rather than the geometric dynamometer. We want to know where, how these are going to fly when they're inhaled. 
So what this tells us is that certainly in theory, these particles will go and they will land, the, the, the microcomposites will land in the lung where we want them. The leucine will then dissolve and our nanoparticles will be released and, and hopefully uptaken by the cells. We want to look at toxicity of the nanoparticles. Um, when we used to use our nanoparticles without any dotap, we get very little um, toxicity with cells. Incorporating the dotap does give us some toxicity, and we've looked at this with lung cells A549 or CALO3. And you can see that over 24 hours, we, we still have 65% viability. That doesn't look so good, but we have to remember that this is far higher concentration than we will ever locally see within the lung. Um, it's one of those issues, we need positive charge nanoparticles, um, they are more toxic than the, the negative. We then wanted to check and see whether these particles would be taken up um, by the cells. This, the first experiment, this is just using the blank nanoparticles, no RNA absorbed, and we used both confocal and fluorescence micro microscopy, staining the nucleus with DAPI and encapsulating Nile red within the nanoparticles. And you can see here we've got the, um, the nucleus, we've got the nanoparticles, and the overlay shows that the nanoparticles are within the, cell, the cytoplasm of the cell and roughly associating themselves with the, with the nucleus. We've then also looked at that with the miRNA absorbed nanoparticles, and we see a similar thing this time. The nucleus is still blue. We've got FAM labeled miRNA on, absorbed onto the nanoparticles. And again, we can see with the overlay that the particles, the, yeah, the nanoparticles are within the cytoplasm and associating themselves with the nucleus. So we've got the nanoparticles where we want them. The next stage was, and this was a big sort of crucial part of this experiment, was to check whether the miRNA was going to be functional after all this formulation and getting it into the cells. And we were quite relieved when we, we did our, my, I didn't do my, my, my PhD student, spent quite a lot of time doing the, um, reverse, reverse transcriptionase quality um, PCR um, study to look at the activity of the MIR146A against the target um, gene. And what we've seen here is you can see we've got the control with no nanoparticles, and we can see we get a dose-dependent response um, as we increase the concentration of nanoparticles that we provide. So just to summarize, we've, in this project, we've got nanoparticles that are within the required range for uptake by cells. Um, we've got the positive zeta potential. We've shown that we can fluorescently, the fluorescently labeled miRNAs absorbed onto the cationic nanoparticles. And we also haven't shown the data here, but we've also shown that we get 77% release um, in PBS after 24 hours. We're confident that we can create nanocomposite microparticles with these that we will optimize to um, be deposited in the correct region of the lung. And that once there, the, rele the nanoparticles that are released will be taken up by the cells into the cytoplasm where they will be active against the, um, the target gene repression. So that's where we're at just now with this project. Um, as I say, this is just one example of what we do with these systems. We're also looking at delivering lots of other biomolecules and small molecules with them. Um, just some acknowledgements. My colleagues, um, Imran Saleen, he's an um, expert on the pulmonary delivery, and Kendi Ross, um, he's our miRNA expert. Nitesh Kinda did the um, aerosolization optimization as part of his PhD, and Adele Mohammed here, he's the, the poor guy who's done all the work on these slides. And thank you for your attention. <laughs> Do you have any questions for Dr. Hushin? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for the nice work. I would like to ask you about if you checked for the chemical integrity for the mi therapeutic microRNA after uh, spray drying. Have you checked that? The, in terms of the structure of it? Yeah, structure of integrity. the structure of the miRNA. Um, uh. The previous work we've done with BSA, it, it, it retains its structural integrity. Uh, um, with the miRNA, the, the fact that it's functional um, at this stage yeah, is enough. Um, it's, it's actually uh. easier to check that you've got functionality than it is to, to, to check the structure of it. So the fact that it's active okay. is enough at, at the moment at this stage. But it, yes, it is something that we we sort of need to go back now. Now that we know that the system in theory works, then there's a point to go back and, and look at it in, in more detail. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? 
So maybe uh, uh, your particles with miRNA uh, take up uh, into the cells by endocytosis process. We think so, yeah. So yeah. if so, how about the uh, escape mechanism of uh, uh, mir miRNA from endosome? Well, the, at that stage, it will be your, it'll still be within the particle. So we think the particle with the miRNA attached will be taken up into the cell and it will be released within the cytoplasm. But we, we have no proof of that. We only know that we, we take the particles and we know it goes in the cell. We then know that it, um, it obviously binds to the messenger RNA and, um, and stops the, the protein transcription. The, the process of, of, of actually being taken up into the cell and what happens within there, we don't know. We have got a project ongoing looking at the toxicity and uptake of the, of the particles alone. Um, but again, we, we don't have data on the exact mechanism of uptake there. We just assume it's endocytosis because that's how the other, other similar particles are taken up. So it's, a, it's basically released from endosome. Well, the, MIR, the miRNA, we think, is still associated with the particle at, at that stage. So it's the particle that's uptaken, not right. the you, you may want to try some endosome disrupting agents and see whether that's, you that's can what, increase that's, what, that's the project that we're looking at with initially just with blank particles. Okay. And then we'll obviously test it with a different drug. Yes. But in support of your hypothesis. for cationic liposome transfection, eh? and it has well shown beyond doubt that cationic lipids like DOTAP are endosomatically active. Yeah. And we mix with anionic phospholipids from the endosome membrane, and there's a certain mechanism published by Soccer 20 years ago, flip-flop, and then it gets out. And this certainly might apply to you. Yeah. Yes. Um, because we did some work with absorbing titazan on to, to get the positive charge, and it still works, but the, the DOTAP is, is, is better, even though it's a lot more expensive. That's the only problem we're working um, with that, but you only need a very small amount to, to, to then do that. So, yeah. Well, thank you very much once again. Uh, here is your certificate. Don't forget thank about you. the certificate. Thank you.